Hey guys, and welcome to the Methods Alpha Guide for the Arcway Dungeon. I'm Chris Potter, and here with me as always is Zerps. Hey guys. Entering the dungeon, the first thing you'll see is a lot of oozes, and they're all different. First off, you'll face two of them, and they're called Unstable Amalgamation. They really only have one mechanic, which is a minor explosion in melee called Ooze Explosion. After that, you'll encounter some nasty green ones. Once these are pulled, they will immediately split into smaller ones and the big one remain as well. The big one has the same mechanic as before, the ooze explosion in melee, and the small ones will continuously split if not stunned as they are uninterruptible. As you can see in the video, we pulled a bit too many and almost got overwhelmed, so what you need to do as a tank is to pick up the big one and try to keep aggro on the small ones. You also need to make sure that you keep stunning the small ones in order for them to stop splitting and you can actually kill the pack. They also have a consume cast, where they leap to a player and start casting, dealing damage. Your healers should be able to heal through this though. This dungeon is apparently random as to say, or at least that's what Skull told us, as the dungeon itself will open random doors on where to go and you can't decide for yourself, so you'll take a new route every time you enter this dungeon. The way that opened for us was to the right, and you'll encounter the same oozes as you did before. After that, you'll follow the stairs up and you'll encounter some rats. This is basically a tank and spank fest. There is one catch to it though. Once they die, they'll explode and deal a significant amount of damage to anyone standing near them. They'll also leave some green zones on the ground which will give you a debuff and that will deal a high amount of damage as well, so try to avoid standing in that. After that pack, we move up the stairs to continue our unsafe journey into this dungeon. Here we learn that if either Sko or Roger died, Sko had to take a shot, so we did our best to make them both die. We get into the room and we pull the two big skeletons and some small mana worms. The mana worms will run to random players and do some damage, they're nothing major. The skeletons however, they have two casts, one of them is Siphon Essence, and they'll drain your life, so try to interrupt them as much as possible. They'll also cast Arcanic Bane, which is a debuff, and it will increase your arcane damage taken and deal a moderate amount of damage. The next pack you encounter will be a bit more challenging if you miss interrupts, and it is a bit healing intensive. First off, they'll leave a debuff on multiple players in the group, absorbing healing, and they'll also cast Face Breach. That will do a lot of damage to anyone standing within 40 range of them, so you need to interrupt this cast. Following the big hallway, we encounter another big ad. This one will spawn a small orb which will fix it a random player and when reaching him or is killed, it will explode and deal damage. We took the stairs up on the right and we got into a room with a lot of the same ads as before. Here we might have overpulled and we almost wiped. The only real thing here is to move out of the small circles on the ground which the small mobs will cast on you. Otherwise, you will end up dying and wiping. Again, you need to be careful here and don't get overconfident. Going over the bridge, there's a small pack of the mobs again, just in a smaller scale. Just pull one at a time to make sure you won't wipe. Once you've cleared the room, you'll encounter the first boss, Ivanir. And Ivanir has a lot of abilities, but it's actually very simple. The first ability to deal with is Volatile Magic. Volatile Magic is a debuff that he will put on a player and after 6 seconds they will explode 15 yards around them. So if you get this you just need to move away. He will also do an ability called Neverlink and this spell links 3 players together and after 5 seconds creates a pool of arcane energy in the space between them. So the idea here is to create a pool that is as small as possible. However this is made difficult because while you have Neverlink you will be pushed back from the other players. This is a really annoying ability to get, and unless you have an ability like Blink or Disengage, you will often spawn quite a large sized pool. While we were doing the boss, we did try to run against the pushback and create a small pool, but looking back, we should have just moved to the sides and kept DPSing the boss, and let it create a big pool, but that was at least to the side of the room, because we lost a lot of DPS trying to run together and it didn't really matter that much. This boss is quite interesting in that the boss's mana actually matters to the fight. During the fight he will sometimes try to cast overcharged mana, 
channeling power from the crystal behind him, and this is a channel that you can and should interrupt. While he is channeling, he will gain stacks of overcharge, and these stacks of overcharge increases haste and mana cost by 5% per stack. Now you might say, yeah, he gains some haste and the tank might take some more damage, but why do we care about his mana cost? And the answer to this is because when he runs out of mana, he will become withered and start dealing high pulsing damage to the entire group. This is sort of a soft enrage, but of course you can delay him from doing this by just making sure you interrupt his overcharge mana ability. Also just a quick mention that this boss only casts RK and Blast at the tank, he doesn't do melee hits or anything, so the tank will want to use abilities that help mitigate magic damage and not things that increase your dodge or block or things like that. After the boss you will have to deal with a couple more of these shades, continuing to interrupt them as much as possible just like before. In the room through the big door there are three packs of mobs. Now we assume that you can pull these one by one, but of course we had Roger Brown and Zirips in the group so we ended up pulling all of Narnia. This pull was very messy for us and it was just mayhem but I'll try to explain the abilities so you know how to deal with them if you do pull them like normal human beings. The first thing to note is the mobs will spawn a big zone on the ground that increases your haste by 40% but it also increases the mob's haste by 40%. So when it spawns you want to interrupt the mobs and move them out of it. They also spawn some other shit on the ground though. So don't be stupid like I was at one point and stand in the wrong pool wondering why my cast weren't going faster but my health was going down. The mobs will place a stacking debuff on you increasing your damage taken. We're not sure how deadly this would be if you only pull one pack at a time but with all these packs we had this debuff grew very big for us and our healer was not able to keep up with dispelling everyone because there was just chaos going on. One of the most annoying abilities the mobs have is Arcane Barrier and this is your standard can't hit from the front type of ability. So along with dealing with all the other crap that's going on, you're also going to have to position yourself behind the mobs to hit them. Yet another debuff the mobs will do is through a class called either Vortex which is a stacking dot and it ticks faster and faster for every application. AoE stuns and AoE interrupts are really helpful in this room because there's just tons of cast going on. Once we finally recovered from this absolute mess of a pool and cleared the remaining pack we were able to engage the second boss. We engaged the second boss with our healer having somewhat low manner as Sko was getting impatient and couldn't wait. He was simply too excited. The first cast we saw from the boss was Suppression Protocol which is a spell that will target a random player and the player will have to kite this mechanic in order to stand in it. It does some small AoE damage to everyone in the group, but it's reduced the further away from the impact point you are. After that, he'll cast some purple puddles on the ground. At first, you should think that this is bad, but it actually increases your haste if you stand in it and soak it, just like the mechanic on Fellow Sekun. Shortly after the puddles appear, he will prison a random player. This is somewhat easily dealt with though, as you'll just run over to the person and click the prison to free him. After freeing whoever is in the prison, he will cast his big spell, it's called Cleansing Force. It will drag all players towards him, removing the haystack you've just acquired before, and deal damage to anyone within 15 yards of him when the cast finishes. There is a catch to this mechanic though. You need to make sure that you get rid of all your haystacks, which you've just soaked before, or you will get stunned for 15 seconds. This means that you can't just have one person soaking all the puddles from before, but you need to spread them out and don't be too greedy. From here on out, it's really just a repeat of mechanics, quite easy, but fun boss. After the boss, we move out of the room and down the stairs to the right, where you'll open the gate and find some trash. This trash is similar to something you've killed before, so you just need to make sure to interrupt. Make sure that you don't get lost here, because there's a lot of Thors and you can easily get lost. Our Warlock did get lost here, but he made it back after we've killed the trash. We continued our way to the right again. We once again faced off the skeletons, where you need to interrupt the Siphon Essence and don't stand in purple pools. I know it's hard, some of the pools are good and some of them are bad. As a general tip though, don't bother standing in them if you're not 100% sure what you're doing. 
You need to be careful here because there's four mobs and they'll all channel at the same time. And this could be on the same player. And if that's the case, you'll die off really quickly. So make sure to interrupt here. AoE stuns or interrupts are really good. After those, we took the stairs down to the left to face off the same spiders as we did previously. But apparently Roger forgot these. And once they die, they explode. And with them, Roger exploded as well and died. We finish off a couple of packs. And you'll see some spiders whip themselves down from the ceiling. They'll jump onto random players and do damage to them. But you should just be able to kill them off fairly fast. This one, however, is not for you if you fear spiders. There are a lot of them, and they creep me out a bit. After a couple of rounds of killing spiders, you'll face off the third boss, called Naltira. And Naltira is a very simple boss, and has few abilities. The first is Blink Strikes. She'll blink around the room, doing big damage in front of her while she's blinking around. So if she lands near you, just move away fast. Her second ability is Never Venom. And she just shoots a big venom pool at a player's location. And if you stand in the pool, you're going to take quite a high taking damage. But even worse, you're going to have your haste reduced by 500%. So don't think that you'll gain DPS by standing in it to get another cast out. Just move out ASAP because 500% reduced haste is definitely a DPS loss. Her last ability is Tangled Web. She'll pull some blades together and connect them with a web that deals ticking damage. To break the web, the players simply need to move 30 yards apart. After the boss, we deal with a pack that casts Chaos Bolts, and also summons a portal that will cause lots of imps to come through them. The Chaos Bolts may look scary, but they can just be handled by the tank using a CD, or as we had a warrior, Skowish is spell reflecting as many as he could. The cast that creates portals are what you should use your interrupts on, as it's just plain annoying having to deal with tons of extra imps. If a portal does get made, don't worry too much, you can just target it and kill it off quickly to reduce the amount of imps that will come through. We then got this big mob that sort of looks like he should do something important, but he didn't really do anything. He just spawns some eyes in the air and then does damage in the direction from them. You can then skip the two patrolling mobs on the right and only kill those on the left. One of the mobs has a new ability that we haven't seen yet which is Fell Strike, and this will spawn green shit on the ground in front of him. So make sure not to stand in that. After another of the weird big mobs that doesn't really do anything, we had a pack of scavengers. And these are also harmless, but they are quite funny. If you look at their cast, they're basically just throwing any old random crap they could get lying about. They were throwing boots, throwing cake, throwing candles. It's, it's pretty funny. On the next pack, the fell guard should be focused down. They leap about and they do considerable damage, so just kill it off fast. Remember to keep the custom mobs from spawning portals though, because you don't want all those imps coming through. You can skip the pack in the far corner of the room by just keeping to the side as you run around the wall. However, we basically cancelled out what we gained by skipping this pack as classic Roger Brown decides to pull the entire room and create another very messy pool. The room contains lots of the same mobs as we have encountered before, and you'll want to continue to interrupt the portals from being spawned, or you'll get tons of imps, as you can see we did here. In general, you want to interrupt and stun as much as possible in this room, and avoid the green stuff from the fell strikes. And it shouldn't be too hard, unless you happen to have queued into a group with Roger Brown. After clearing a couple more packs, you'll be in the room with a boss that has a strong resemblance to Fell Lord Zakun from Hellfire Citadel. And looking the same isn't the only thing that those two have in common, as their ability is also somewhat similar. The first thing he'll cast is Fell Fissure, it's the green circles on the ground, and they'll spawn a Fell Spire after 3 seconds if anyone stands in it. We assume that this Fell Spire will do pulsing AV damage to the entire group, but we didn't see it. After that he'll cast Shadow Slash, which is a really similar mechanic to Cavitation as we know it from Sukun as well. It will spawn a wave which you simply move away from to prevent taking damage. He will also randomly start spawning something falling from the sky, indicated by the green circles beneath players. Again, you'll just move out of it. Bats will also spawn during the encounter, 
the tank simply picks them up and you just cleave them off as a DPS. The last ability he cast is Wicked Slam, where he will slam his axe into the ground, knocking everyone back and dealing a moderate amount of damage to everyone. This mechanic is unavoidable. After the boss, you have to make your way back to the entrance to kill the last boss. The easy way here is to take the same route back as you came from, but we took a shortcut which involved killing a few mobs. The mobs we found was the same as we encountered before, simply interrupt the portal and you should be good. After the pack, we made our way back to the entrance. And the last boss that you face is Advisor Vandross. He's quite an interesting boss and there is a variety of things that you have to deal with. First of all he'll cast Accelerating Blast and this is a cast that is interruptible and should be interrupted because if not it will deal high damage to the tank and give the boss a stacking buff increasing his damage and haste by 5%. The second ability he'll use is Force Bomb. He will summon two Force Bombs which will detonate after 5 seconds dealing damage within 4.5 yards of them and they'll create a Force Nova. You need to run through this, this is very Imperator markup like. Yeah, and you can just blink through them as well, which is really helpful. He will also spawn these Chrono Shards, and don't get confused between them and the Force Bombs, you can tell the difference between these because they are much smaller, and he's also going to spawn a lot more of them. They explode after 8 seconds, and they do damage in 10 yards. At 50% health, the boss will cast Spanish in Time. This teleports all players away and then gives you 2 minutes to make it back to the boss or you'll die. This is very similar to the ability that the last boss in Deadmind's Heroic had in Cataclysm. This part was actually quite funny as we had absolutely zero clue where to run to get back to the boss. Seeing as we didn't have a map of the dungeon, seeing as it's still early alpha, and Sko who was supposed to have done this dungeon before wasn't for much help. So we were quite desperate in the end. As you run back towards the boss door, you'll encounter some mobs. They're called Timeless Rapes. The only cast they have is the Time Lock, and it will stun any player it's targeted until either interrupted or dispelled. Once you encounter them, they'll continuously pulse AoE damage from them, so you need to kill them off quickly. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> After a lot of confusion and a lot of time wasted running in the wrong direction, we finally managed to get our way to the boss. You simply need to damage the boss to make it out of the realm. And once you're back into the real world, the boss will continue to cast his other abilities just as before, and the fight is the same until you eventually kill him. This concludes our guide for the Arcway. It was a fun dungeon and there was a lot of cool things. We also made it look a lot harder than it is due to the ninja pulling of multiple packs. We hope you found the guide useful though, and be sure to like the video and leave a comment with any feedback you have. Thanks for watching guys, bye. Bye guys.